Got another exam question walkthrough for A-level chemistry. So this is number 13 in the electropotentials playlist. Question deals with electron configurations, the drawing of a cell diagram, calculating cell potential, and predicting cell reactions. Video is suitable for all of the major exam boards, and I hope you like the video. If you do, please give it a like, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do that. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So there's the electron configurations for the nickel atom and the nickel 2 plus ion. The exam board doesn't mind which way around these go, but just remember when you form the ion of a transition element, you need to lose the 4s electrons first. Moving on to the cell, so you can see I've put the iodine I- minus on the left-hand side. So we need solutions of those in that beaker. That means we need a platinum electrode dipping into there. Um, wire going around through a voltmeter to the nickel electrode dipping into a solution of nickel 2 plus ions. And then a salt bridge dipping into the solutions. Standard conditions, one mole per decimeter cube for your solutions, 298 Kelvin, or you could say 25 degrees C if you want it there. And I don't think this was essential, but it's a good idea to put it in anyway, so you don't forget 100 kilopascals of pressure. To work out the cell potential, it's the most positive electrode potential minus the least. So it's coming out at 0.79 volts for this one. So we're moving on to part C. So I just copied the table from the previous page, save me going back and forth. So we're interested in, for the first part, we're interested in this system here, the ion 3, ion 2, and the hydrogen peroxide one as well. Looking at the electrode potentials, you can see the hydrogen peroxide one's the more positive one. So its half equation is going to run in the forwards direction, which means that the ion one's going to run in reverse. And we need to double this one because there's only one electron in that. Uh, but there's two in there. So there's the answer there for that one. And then moving on to part two, we've got to explain why zinc reacts with acidified dichromate six ions to form chromium two plus in two stages. So I've already highlighted the uh, two half equations we're interested in at first. So you can see that the dichromate 6 half equation is going to run in the forwards direction uh, because it's got the more positive electrode potential, which means the zinc one is going to run in reverse. So to get this business of equilibrium in, we're just going to use the word shift. So we're going to say this one shifts to the right and this one shifts to the left. And then the equation for that process, if we look at the electrons, we've got two in this one, but we've got six in this one. So we're going to multiply the zinc half equation by three and add it to that one, which gives that overall equation there for the first step. And then you can see this equation has produced chromium three plus ions, which feature in this system here. So now we just need to do the same sort of thing. We're looking at the electrode potential values and you can see that the chromium one is still the more positive one. And so therefore this half equation shifts to the right. Therefore this one shifts to the left. So there's the overall equation for step two. You see we've got chromium two plus produced there and I've had to double the chromium half equation because of the electrons.